In this video, we'll be further discussing friction using our friends, the dog and the dog food bag, except this time, they're on a slope. Now, dogs can't grip the surface as well like cats do, so we'll say the slope is not very steep and it's a carpet. That way, the dog won't slide down, but will move back as it drags the bag. So we have the bag's weight and the normal force. If you look closely, you will notice the forces are angled differently. This is because we have a para and a perpendicular axis. We'll use these symbols throughout the video. The two lines for parallel and the upside down T for perpendicular. We'll also say that the angle will be 25 degrees. Now, because we're on an angle, we're going to break up the weight into a parallel component and a perpendicular component. Why do we have to do this? As you can see, the normal force has no components because it's already perpendicular to the slope. But W, the weight, has a component in the parallel direction and in a perpendicular direction. You can see that even the vector is aligned at an angle from the axis. So this gives you a hint that you need to split it into its components. Also, here the perpendicular component of W equals the normal force, which is different than on level ground. On level ground, the normal force equals the weight, but here on the slope, the normal force is less than on level ground, which also allows the maximum static friction to be less. So now, the next step is to make a table where we can list what forces we have in the parallel and perpendicular directions. So for the perpendicular direction, we have N. We also have W, the weight, but remember that this is the perpendicular component of W. For the parallel direction, we have friction. Notice that it has a little K in front of this. This means that for this example, the bag is in motion. And we also have the parallel component of weight. Next, we can insert the equations we will be using. For the perpendicular direction, we have N equals W perpendicular. For the perpendicular direction, we are using the perpendicular component of weight. And this gives us Mg cosine 25 degrees, because we said that we're using an angle of 25 degrees. This means that N equals mg cosine 25 degrees. Now, you might be wondering where we're going with this because there is no question to work with. So what are we trying to solve for? The reason the question was not given first was to get you into the habit of breaking up components when forces are on an angle. So here's the question. We're going to look for the coefficient of friction if the kinetic friction is 45 newtons. Now, this would be much easier to solve because we have already done the most difficult task. All we need to do now is use our two formulas and make a substitution. Since we have n in both formulas and we're looking for the coefficient of friction, we can substitute n equals mg cosine 25 degrees into our friction formula. Once we do this, we only have one formula to work with. Once you solve for mu k and insert all the numbers, you should be getting 0.07 for the coefficient of kinetic friction. Check if this makes sense. 0.07 is a small number and the dog has already set the bag in motion. So this coefficient makes sense. Next, check that your substitutions make sense in relation to how you broke up the components. So that's it for now. I hope that you found this video helpful.